Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used iPhone, iPad, and other Apple products are worth at Gazelle dot com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to i5 for the iPhone. We're on episode 93 or as I like to call it, 93 to infinity. Some of you who liked rap music in the 90s and also lived in the Bay Area might understand that reference. This is the show that covers the latest iPhone news, apps, tips, and tricks. I'm Sarah Lane, your friendly neighborhood guide to all things iOS. Let's begin with some photos of this weekend's big Kanye and Kardashian wedding. I mean, how about that dress? Just kidding. Number one. Okay, so we're less than a week out from WWDC, which is the Worldwide Developers Conference that Apple throws every year in San Francisco. In fact, it's really close to my house, and you can already feel the fever. Lots of rumors are going into the show, just like every year. What is iOS going to look like? We've got the rumors about HealthBook and apps that might not just tap into fitness, but also your medical vitals. That's all pretty intriguing. The iWatch rumors just won't go away. And just this week, the Financial Times reported that Apple's planning a platform that would turn iOS devices, like the iPhone, to control smart home devices. So that would be like controlling the lights in your house, your security system, your other connected appliances. Now, if this report is to be believed, the platform would be built into the iPhone and iPad and stuff like that, and it would centralize control rather than spreading it out over multiple third-party apps. That would be cool if it's shown off at WWC next week. We just don't know if it will be yet. What we will probably get a peek at, though, is the next version of OS X, Mavericks. That should integrate with iOS better than it does now. If I could ask iMessage, to just be slightly better, anyone, anyone? But one thing we do know for sure is that Apple is going to live stream the video from the keynote on Monday, June 2nd at 10 a.m. Pacific. That actually works great for me because, of course, we'll be covering the event live here on Twit, and so then we're all gonna have the video. And I hope you're able to join us for that. Again, 10 a.m. Pacific, Monday, June 2nd. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Number two. I was all set to cover TuneIn Radio a couple weeks ago and it got postponed for a bit, but I haven't forgotten. Let's talk about it now. TuneIn Radio got a nice design update and I think it's just peachy and it really deserves a look if you like radio. And who doesn't like radio? Terrestrial radio, satellite radio, audio podcast radio. TuneIn handles all of that. You can follow your favorite sports stations, music, talk radio, pretty much every genre you can think of. TuneIn has something for you. The company claims over 100,000 traditional radio stations and over 4 million podcasts, so that's a pretty healthy catalog. And if you're already familiar with TuneIn Radio, there are a few things that have gotten better. First, your favorites list has been changed. Now it's just the stations that you follow. I think that makes more sense. If you're following it, you want to hear about it. You also see how much time is left on a show that you're listening to. Obviously very helpful if you know you've only got 30 minutes or some other limited time to finish a show. Car mode is easy to toggle on and off through the browse tab. The idea with car mode is you're not really supposed to be looking at your iPhone ever when you're in the car, but let's say you're at a stoplight and you have to very quickly press play or search or something like that. You should have a very simple interface with big letters that won't distract you too much. We've talked a lot about audio on the show recently. I talked about the podcast app just last week. Downcast is another good one. The thing though is that with TuneIn Radio, it's very all-encompassing. It's an all-encompassing app that's good for podcasts and for radio. KCRW, for example, that's a really awesome station down in Los Angeles, that's here. As well as the entire Twit network, of course. I will say I have a teeny tiny gripe with i5 not having more subscribers. 209 at last check? I don't think so, you guys. Maybe it's because you all prefer just to watch me? I don't know. Number three, we got an email from Tom, and Tom has an organizational question. He writes, do you know of an app that can categorize apps that you've downloaded previously? I currently download up to two different apps a day, and my phone keeps filling up. 
it'd be great to be able to remember what I've downloaded is I can forget certain names for apps. I know I can access it in the purchase section, but that's just a date order list and it doesn't help me. Okay, Tom, there are a few things you can do to arrange your apps, but I'm not sure any of the solutions are really what you're looking for. Now, assuming that you don't just want your most recent apps to show up on your last page, which is what they would do by default, you can choose to have them rearranged alphabetically by going into your settings and then general and then reset and then choosing reset home screen layout. But I don't recommend this. In fact, I really warn you against it unless you don't use folders because if you do this, your whole folder structure will be wiped out. I actually tried this for fun one day and I immediately regretted it. It took me forever to undo the mess that I had created by losing all my folders. Now you can also choose to rearrange the order of how your apps show up in your notification center by going into your notification settings and dragging and dropping apps however you want them in that drop down list. But that requires at least knowing which app is which and that's just for notifications and you might not even want those turned on, at least not for all your new apps. If I were you, I would go folder crazy. For example, I have a metric ton of photography apps. When I download a new one, before I even open it, I immediately put it in that photography folder. That way, even if I forget that the name of the app is Afterlight or Waterlog or something that doesn't really trigger anything to me, I know it's somewhere in that photography folder. Helps a lot. If anyone out there has other tips for Tom, do send them our way at i5 at twit.tv and we'll pass them along. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Gazelle. If you're thinking about getting a new iPad, you know WWDC is next week and we might get more answers on what the next iPhone will look like. Well, you probably have some old iDevices that are just sitting around and Gazelle wants to buy those, your used iPhone, your iPad, even another kind of smartphone. What you can do is lock in your price today and then send your old gadget to Gazelle when you get your new one because Gazelle's offer is good for 30 days. You get it locked in. So you go to gazelle.com, that's G-A-Z-E-L-L-E.com, and just find your item. You tell Gazelle the condition your item's in. Then Gazelle says, hey, here's how much that item is worth. You've got that locked in for 30 days. Take your time sending it to us. Now when they get your gadget, you'll get paid fast by check, PayPal, or get an extra 5% with an Amazon gift card. So go to Gazelle right now and get that offer. You get paid in cash, the payment is fast, just within a few days of the item being received, and again, those offers are good for 30 days. So you've got some flexibility. Gazelle will even wipe your data for free. The company's paid more than $100 million to over 700,000 happy customers. Free shipping, too. What is that iPhone or other smartphone worth or gadget? Take a minute and go to gazelle.com and find out. But do it now because your iPhone may lose value the longer you wait. Thanks so much to Gazelle for sponsoring this episode of i5. Number four. All right, let's listen to a voicemail. Haven't gotten one of those in a while. We got from an unnamed fellow who has some issues with deleted apps. Hi, Sarah. Is there any way to remove deleted apps on the iPhone? I feel they're taking up space and driving me crazy. I just wonder if there was a way of doing this. Thanks. I listen every day. Great show. Bye. Okay, so when you delete an app from your phone, it is deleted. You know how to delete, you know, you just press and hold and then a little X. You don't have to do anything else. And if you want that app back, you do have to reinstall it. Now the problem that you might be having is if you're regularly backing up your apps to iTunes on your computer and then syncing and somehow those apps are being put back onto your phone, but that shouldn't happen without iTunes asking you if you actually want to do that first. It's a setting. Now you could also be asking about iCloud because if you delete an app from your phone and it's still on another iDevice using your same iCloud account or you've already paid for it, iCloud is smart enough to let you reinstall it quickly without signing in again or paying again, but that's still not gonna take up any space locally on your phone. The last thing you might be asking about is residual documents and data that might be left on your phone after you delete an app, which really shouldn't be an issue at all, but I don't think that's what you're asking. If anyone has a scenario I might have missed here, maybe I'm missing something, please do weigh in. You know where to go, i5 at twit.tv. Finally, number five. We've got a handy little reminder that comes in from Matt who writes, if you hold down the back button in Safari, it brings up the history. I don't know if you covered this before, but I discovered it by accident. 
the accidental duh tips are always the best ones. Well met, to be honest, we have covered this tip, but not in a while, so it does bear repeating, because it's very, very, very handy trick for those of you who prefer not to have a bunch of tabs open in your mobile browser, or you forget where you were several web pages ago, I do that all the time. Just hold down that back button, navigate back in time from there, works for the forward button too, same way. And I should point out that this tip also works in Chrome, Safari and Chrome. Probably some other browser apps too that I haven't tried in a while. That's my default browser in iOS Chrome is. So if it's yours too, don't have to feel left out. This tip works for multiple browsers. And that does it for this episode of i5. Hope you all had the best time ever. All of the apps and links and other information from the show is at twit.tv slash i5. As I've mentioned already in the show twice now, you can email any ideas or general feedback to i5 at twit.tv. You can leave us a voicemail at 614 on i5 or send us a video dancing. I'm Sarah Lane and we'll see you next time.